Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give our praise, our honor, and our glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the men who taught me this truth. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of what people hear and whether they forbear. All right, this lesson is inspired by, by a comment that I received on uh, the video that I did. It's entitled, um, uh, Prophecies That Every Israelite Needs to Know Part 2. All right, and um, the guy that, that commented on the video, uh, he said that the breakdown of Isaiah, the 26th chapter, verse 20, was incorrect. All right, and uh, I'm assuming it's because the brother Rayal spoke of so-called UFOs, which are just the chariots of the Lord. All right, so that's the topic that I'm going to touch on today. And uh, Lord's will is edifying to the elect. All right. So let's uh, start in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse uh, 7. All right. It says, Behold, he, all right, who is the he? That's speaking of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, all right, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. All right, and the main part that I wanted to get, all right, because once again, this video, you know, it's entitled uh, UFOs in the Bible, or right, something to that effect. The main part that I wanted to get, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Okay, let's get another scripture on that. Okay, just remember that because that's going to be a, a key, a key word you're going to see, all right, multiple times. This is Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 1. Okay, this is talking about the same event right here. This is Isaiah 19 and 1. The burden of Egypt, all right, and America is known as uh, the, the land that's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. All right, it says, Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, and all the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. All right, so you got to understand, okay, that that word clouds, is another code word for chariots or the vehicles of the angels. All right, I'm gonna prove that right quick. All right, Psalms, uh, the 104th chapter. All right, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 104, and verse 3. It says, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Okay, so he maketh the clouds his chariot. All right, and the chariot is just not pretty much a word for a vehicle, okay? A vehicle of the angels. Now, uh, Yahweh Shai says he's coming on, on, on uh, with clouds, all right? And he says he comes he comes into Egypt on a swift cloud, okay? So, you got to understand that, uh, that that word cloud, like I said, is, is a cold word for chariot, all right? Now, let's see. There's another uh, a precept in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, all right, that... It's going to give us another code word for chariots of the Lord. All right. This is uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 13. And let me see. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that had moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. Now, obviously, this is talking about Yahweh Shai. Okay, you know, pretty well, uh, this is going, it's talking about that, uh, that war that's going to happen in Revelation 19th chapter. All right, he's going to come with the, the thousands of heaven. But it says that, it says, I'm going to read that again. Second Ezra 13, all right, in verse 6. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. All right, have you ever, have you ever seen a flying mountain? All right, yeah, me neither. It says, but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him, were so afraid and yet durst fight. All right, so this is a account. This is Yahweh Shai, okay, who the world immediately calls Jesus. So, one account in the book of Revelations, book of Revelation, chapter one, it, it says that he, he he comes with clouds. 
Okay, Isaiah 19 and 1. Behold, the Lord uh, cometh and up into Egypt on a swift cloud. And now it's saying that he's going to come on a great mountain and fly up upon it. All right, so in this instant, this is another word. Okay, a cloud, chariot. All right, uh, could be a mountain. All right, and now I know, okay, someone's going to say, well, that's in the Apocrypha, brother. All right, well, these chariots being described as flying mountains is also in the book of Zechariah. So let's go ahead and get that next. All right, Zechariah chapter uh, 6 it is. All right, Zechariah chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 1 and read on down to 5. It says, And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. Okay, so... That the mountains represent like I would say you could say uh motherships or fatherships all right like like bigger you know bigger uh, bigger vehicles and then the uh the the horses all right the chariots okay these are like I guess you could say smaller ships it says in the first chariot were red horses and in the second chariot black horses and the third chariot white horses and the fourth chariot grizzled and bay horses then answered I and said unto the angel that talked with me what are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. Okay, so once again, so these are these are their uh, flying vehicles, these chariots. Okay, and it says that four chariots uh, came from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. So if you can imagine, you had like two, uh, you had two uh, giant, you know, flying vehicles. All right, and then four smaller ones that flew in between them and approached, all right, the prophet Zechariah. Okay, so, all right, the Lord, all right, is coming on a, a, a chariot, cloud, mountain, whatever you want to call it, all right, but he is not coming in a, a Boeing 737 or a, a fighter jet. All right, he's coming from the sky in a flying vehicle, and it's, it's not, it's not uh, comprised of technology that, that we have, all right. So what, what do you call, what do you call a, a flying object? That we can't label or classify. All right, you would call it an unidentified flying object, aka a UFO. All right, and that's the reason why I say there is UFOs in the Bible. The guy, the guy that, the guy that uh that made that comment, he just don't understand the scriptures, man. Okay, why? Because the scriptures tell you in Amos three and seven that the Lord revealeth His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. All right, these are these are vehicles that the angels use, and obviously we don't have that technology. So what do we call it? All right, UFOs, UAPs, you see, and the and the, the, the entities that are that are going to be operating and controlling these vehicles. Obviously, they're not from Earth. All right, they're extraterrestrials. So, what would you call them? You call them aliens. All right, but they're really not aliens. They they are they are the angels of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, but we just use these terms because they're kind of um what's the word I'm looking for? Like you know, talking about UFOs and. And aliens and all that kind of stuff. We know what it really is. All right, it's the chariots of the Lord and the angels. But you know, we call it that because it is a, a attention grabber. All right, so to speak. And when I say we, I'm just talking. I'm really speaking for myself. Okay, you know, it when because most people they don't they don't know what chariots of the Lord are. None of that. They've never heard of any of this stuff. Most most people in the world can't even tell you what sin is. All right. So when you you know, I'm just using this because this is a common term that people in the world you know know. Everyone knows. Everyone's heard of a UFO or an alien. All right, so I just use it, you know, I just use it as, uh, you know, so people can understand what I'm talking about. But it is in the Bible, nonetheless. Let's get some more precepts. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. All right, Revelation chapter 19, and it's going to it's gonna tell us more about, uh, you know, that time when the Lord when the Lord appears. Okay, Revelation chapter 19, and verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed upon him, so like it followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen. White and clean, okay? So, this is Yahweh coming to make war with the nations, all right? And it says on his head were, were many crowns, okay? And that's talking about the crowns of all these different kingdoms because he's going he's gonna to execute judgment upon all the kingdoms of the face of the earth and take, you know, take their power from them. So, he's going to take their crown, all right? And he, he comes to, to judge and make war, 
Okay, and what does it say in verse 14? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. All right, so we know these are these are not actual literal horses because horses don't fly. But you know, at the t at that time, that's how people got around. All right, that was like that was like their vehicle. Okay, like how we have cars today. They didn't have automobiles, so what did they ride on? They rode on horses. All right, they didn't have planes back then. So the the prophet, all right, uh, um, John the Revelator and uh, Zechariah. Okay, they're just trying to describe these things as best as they can. But this is what it is. Okay, and we'll go back to Second Ezra 13 and three because. So it's the same thing that he's going to come with that with the thousands of heaven. All right. These are the angels. Second Ezra 13 and three. And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look all the things that were that that that, that so like all the things trembled that were seen under him. OK, let's get another precept. This will probably be the last one I'm going to get. I think I, you know, it's a short video, but I think that I um I drove the point home. All right. That UFOs, you know, quote unquote aliens. Which once again, really just the angels of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and their, you know, the ships that they're going to be using. All right. That's all it is. But this is Habakkuk 3 and 16. It says, when I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. All right. See that? So who, who are the troops? It's the angels, man. Okay, we just read it, the thousands of heaven. And what they're going to be, like I said, they're going to be coming in fighter jets. All right. No, they're going to be coming in vehicles that, that we cannot uh, name or classify. All right. So what are they? Quote, unquote, UFOs or UAPs, you know, whatever you want to call it. All right. But, you know, just uh, just a quick video, you know, to cut that dude, because he doesn't know what the hell's going on, man. The reason why he made that comment to him, oh, he, that's a complete, completely wrong breakdown of Isaiah 26. And I knew he's talking about verse 20 because that's the only verse that we really brought out. All right. You know, I don't know what he thinks it is. I guarantee that he won't make a video going into it. But, um, you know, that's just, a, you know, a quick cut because you quote unquote UFOs are in the Bible. Quote unquote angels are in the Bible. All right. They're, they are just the uh, the uh, it's like a quote unquote aliens are in the Bible. They're just the the, uh, the vehicles of the angels and the, and the angels themselves. That's that's all it is. All right. You know, the armies of heaven. But anyways, OK, Lord's will. This was edifying. I'm going to close out with that. That being said, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, or Kakradash. All right, Shalom, and on to the next one. Brethren, I pray you sing to the Lord a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them this written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.